today I'm going to be sharing a smart art box project using alcohol inks. If you're unfamiliar with 360 degree videos, you are just going to take your phone if you're watching this on your phone and if you turn, you will be able to see all around the room in here. If you're watching on your PC, just use your mouse and you can move the screen around so you can look wherever you want. It's almost like your stalkers in my home. Just for transparency, this video is being sponsored by Smart Art Box. Smart Art Box is a monthly subscription box where every month they send you a box full of full-sized art supplies. One of my favorite things about these boxes is that they come with this brochure that goes over the history of whatever style you're working in. You get some project pointers and good description of all of the supplies in the box. And then on the back, you get step-by-step -step instructions. So basically, this is an art lesson in a box. So let's go ahead and take a look at what came in this box. I'm gonna have to move this stuff off my table. Come on, plants. Teal chicken salt and pepper shakers. No one's surprised. I don't know how messy this is going to be, so I'm going to go ahead and put a, my drop cloth on the table. This used to be my backdrop for my videos years ago, and seriously, I think I've gotten more use out of this drop cloth than anything else I own. Okay. So, of course, we had the brochure is the first thing that comes in the box. We have three different colors of the alcohol ink. We've got chili pepper, Baja blue and sun bright yellow. I don't see myself using the yellow that much. Oh, I could mix green though. I may be using yellow. We've got the cleanup solution. A Claro extender. I think this is the stuff that lightens it. We have an art alternative illustration marker. A micro, what does that say? Micro micro perm I can read micro perm marker or a pen a paintbrush Ooh, I like this paintbrush this is a filbert by Princeton Aston well, that's a nice brush and a pad of Yupo translucent paper this is by Legion these are the same people who make well the other Yupo paper you've seen me use and Stonehenge same company so yay this may be a terrible idea you may not be able to see anything that i'm doing so i'll kind of hold up what's going on this is my first time trying to do a video like this with okay a 360 degree video i don't finish my sentences um so the first thing that we are going to do set up your work by placing scratch paper under your yupo sheet before starting i think i'm going to use my box for this i guess i tear this out I should use a more solid color under this. Hmm. Oh, actually, we will just use the lid. Looks perfect. Ugh. I need a razor blade. Here, back. Ow. I have returned with my exacto knife. Apparently, really bad at this. Was anyone else cringing knowing I'm going to cut my arm off or something? Can you cut your arm off with an X Acto knife? Okay, we'll move that over there. So, step one set up your work area by placing scratch paper under your Yupo sheet before starting. Done. It involves running ink, it can get messy. Step two it talks about how to clean it up if it does get messy. Oh, that's what this stuff is for. The cleanup solution is to clean up areas that apparently can make a mess on your table. Step two, allow the colors to spread before applying more. Continue to add drops of ink throughout the paper, slowly allowing the colors to combine by applying drops directly to the other colors. Use the Claro extender to lighten up some of the, okay, I'm excited. So I kind of want to try, because on theirs, they did a really cool picture of a, I'm going to do a couple of these. They did a really cool one of a jellyfish. So let's try that. I'm going to actually work this way. We have to move the camera so you can see what I'm doing. Maybe see what I'm doing? I don't know how much you're going to see. Okay. This is scary. Okay, so I want it to be kind of a greenish blue, so I'm going to mix my yellow and my blue together. I'm not going to use any red on this one and probably a lot of the clear to lighten up the top. Oh, I should get paper towels ready. I have a feeling this is going to get messy. Handy roll of paper towels there. Okay. This is scary, I've never used alcohol inks before. Luckily I've got lots of sheets, so if this goes terribly wrong, I can practice a lot. 
Okay, so some drops. How much do you put on? I have a tendency to always use too much. I guess let that spread. I, I, I don't know what I'm doing. It says to continue this process until your page is complete. Like seriously, this is why I like these boxes so much. If it weren't for these instructions, I would be so lost right now. I would be too scared to even try using these. Probably should have watched some videos before I got started. Ooh, the yellow and the blue are pretty mixed together. Let's actually put a bunch of yellow. Whoa, this is strong. You can definitely smell the alcohol in this. Okay, this is really fun. This is really pretty. I just squirt a bunch in there. I think I'm, I, I'm sure I'm doing too much. You know what, I'm probably doing so much too much that you're not even gonna be able to see the black marker on top. Let's go crazy with, wait. Nope, cleanup solution. Put that over there. This is the one I want. So I wanted it lighter at the top. Here I go again, putting too much. Maybe I should use my paper towel and soak some of this up. I'm definitely using too much. I wonder what happens if you put this down first if you want something light. Okay, that is too green. I think I'll use this for, not this. What happens if I run it? I don't think I was supposed to do that. Okay. I think I'm gonna title this video, Watch Lisa Fail in 360 degrees. Yeah, okay, so I'm gonna go with that's too much. We're just gonna sit that guy there and try again with way less this time. How many sheets are in here? Usually they have like 10. Oh, 15 sheets. I've got 15 tries or chances to fail. Trying this again with way less drops. I probably should have watched a tutorial too before starting this. I bet you project pointers tell you not to use so much. Ooh, okay, now that looks cool. It's, okay, I don't know if you can see this. It's starting to kind of spread. It looks all pretty. Ooh, yeah, okay, less is definitely better. So my first tip, don't put so much to start with. Go less and just build up if you need more because this is already looking so much better than fail number one. Although that's kind of pretty too, huh? I mean, it's not right. Actually, let's just spread this. I mean, if I'm gonna fail, let's fail on the entire sheet and not have a white border. Whoa, let's fail onto the paper instead. I mean, it's not ugly. It's just not what I think it's supposed to be. Oh, no, I'm green. Okay, let's get some clear and see what happens. Oh, this is pretty. This is this could create some really cool backgrounds for different sketches and stuff, especially if you go with lighter colors, I think. This is seriously entertaining. Ooh. It's a little dark still, so maybe I shouldn't keep putting more color. Maybe I should keep putting more clear. Apparently this goes a long way because I thought I've squeezed a ton of this and it hardly looks like anything has come out yet. I want to lighten up these dark areas because otherwise my drawing isn't going to show up at all. I'm going to put clear on all the white and then let a little bit of color go on there. I just kind of want to leave it like this without drawing on it. That's just pretty. That would make for a pretty like front of a card or something like that. I don't know. I really don't know how much more I want to add. Wait, which was the front? Does it matter? I guess it's the same on both sides. So I'm going to try this and put more of the clear first. One of the things that I'm loving about these smart art boxes, actually there's a lot of things I love, but one of the things that's so fun is I feel free to just experiment with stuff. Like I don't feel the pressure. And we're back. So my camera overheated after 14 minutes. These 360 at least the Samsung one, probably not ideal for art videos, but it's still fun sometimes. So I did another one and I let it run a bit more. You can see that. I'm actually, this is probably the one that I'll end up drawing the jellyfish on. 
And then these are starting to dry a little bit. So before my camera overheats really quick and then we wait and let everything dry and camera cool off, let's go ahead and I wanna see what happens because it said you could reactivate it. Ooh, it does. When you put this back on, let's do this so you guys can see a bit better. The drops actually do reactivate and kind of lift off some of the areas that have started to dry. So that gives a really cool effect on this. With Yupo paper, it, it's never, it's not absorbent. So things aren't gonna soak in. It's basically gonna sit on top. So if like I took water, I could just wipe all of this off. It's just been how Yupo works. So you can always reactivate stuff. This is the stuff, well, I don't use the clear one, but the, the opaque one is the one that I use for my pigment markers. I need more. It definitely creates a really dark ring around anywhere where I've put a drop. I actually want to try this too. Let's let that one set for a bit and pull my solid mass of green, <laughs> whoops, and add some drops on top of that. So this seems like even if you have a big whoops or you use too much like me, you can actually still get really fun results with where it looks like alcohol ink is supposed to, at least on this paper. This is one of those mediums I've been so interested in trying, but I never, like I didn't know where to start or what to get. So it's real, I was really excited when I saw that was in this month's box. If any of you use alcohol inks and you have like some favorite tutorials here on YouTube, link me below in the comments because I would love to check out some people who are experienced with this or videos from those who are experienced with it. So this is definitely fun. It creates, I just love the look. Like this is definitely something I could see myself wanting to do again. Probably putting too much. We'll let this set. So I'm going to stop. I'm going to let all of this dry and I will come back when I can start drawing and when my camera has cooled off so it doesn't overheat and shut itself off again. Go Samsung. Okay, we are back. This is, I let it dry for maybe, I don't know, 15 minutes. Um, I was under the impression that it was still wet because it's so shiny, but it dries. It said that in the, the instructions. It dries really glossy. It's actually very pretty. So the one that was solid green that I thought I messed up so bad ended up being my favorite. It kind of looks like seaweed and being that I want to draw a jellyfish on this, that's kind of perfect. Parts of this, ah, down here are a little wet. I made a little bit of a fingerprint, but up here is all dry. So let's give it a try. You'll be watching this upside down. Yeah, I need to stop sticking my fingers in that part. It's definitely wet just at the bottom. Um, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't have a reference photo, so I'm just kind of, I'm kind of looking at, yeah, let's just look at theirs. We'll go for close. I actually really like the one that they had in their sample. Give them some jellyfish legs. Pretty sure they're not called legs, but whatever. Like you could definitely see how you could get so many different looks with using these. I mean, you could get like, this one is really smooth. You could get something that was more, let me give them a little curls at the ends here. Um, you could get something like this one. So there's my little sketch of a jellyfish. I could mess with that more, but that's about where I'm gonna leave that guy. Um, I could, oh, you know what I, where was that other marker? What does this guy do? Is this white or color of alternatives, marker, illustration? Maybe I should read the instructions. Oh, you're supposed to do more blending with this. Maybe I'll blend over the jellyfish. It's like clear, it's not white. Oh, okay, that's actually kind of cool. You can get little highlights and stuff. I feel like my marker's really dry though. There we go, now it's starting to come out. That's pretty cool. That definitely is a good fit. Like this is a good combination of supplies, the way all of these work together. I definitely like being able to pull some of this out on his legs and stuff where it was a bit too light. I could probably do the same thing though with like a Q-tip or those of you who are not in the US, a cotton swab and lift some up with water, I bet. This marker is really dry. Maybe the other side. Oh, this side works way better. I think it's dry because it's picking up that ink and making it like, gives it a weird texture there. Yeah, the thin side works better for sure. That's giving me better results. The little highlights on my, my water droplets. 
So you can lift some of that up like you can see what I've done here. Um, definitely gives you, <laughs> I've got it all over my fingers, um, a lot of, of options there. This one is still, oh, that one's really wet. But like, here's the, the one that came out. I don't think I'm gonna do anything with this because the background, I just think that looks so pretty. And then this is the one that I did. That one I love, love. Like it just, the flow on that. And the, what I did basically when it was just super wet because I put way too much, I just held it by this edge and let it run. And that's what happened. And I'm pretty happy with that. These are a lot of fun. Like I can see so much potential for making backgrounds for other artwork. And what I would, I wonder how these would work with the pigment markers, the Windsor Newton pigment markers, because I use Yupo paper for that. It'd be kind of cool to do a background like this and then use like a cotton swab or a Q-tip or something and wipe off where your subject is going to be and then do your subject with the markers. I may have to try that one of these days because there's definitely a lot of possibilities for how to use these. If you are interested in getting your own smart art box sent to you every month, I have a list of the countries that this is available to in the video description, along with a coupon code that will give you a discount off your subscription for life. Have you subscribed yet? If not, I have a handy button. I don't know where the handy button shows up on a 360 video. I don't even know if there will be a handy button, but make sure you subscribe so you can keep up to date with all of my new art videos every single week. You know, assuming YouTube decided to actually notify people.